Good morning, good morning. It's 4.30 a.m. It's Monday. It's a beautiful day, beautiful day. I'm at the gym already. I was just watching um, uh, Conor McGregor. It was a short film that he was doing. I was watching it on the on the TV in the car on my way up here. And uh, the guy is a beast. The guy is absolutely. And, and, and one common thing I was looking throughout the documentary was he had a mindset that already said that I will not lose, that there was absolutely nothing more important than this this thing I'm being called to do, right? And the more I think about it and the more I dwell on it and the more I find myself doing things that I didn't used to do, the more I know that your purpose on this earth becomes so much more clear when you become determined, when you become persistent, and when you start recognizing the signs that you are supposed to be doing something better than what you're doing right now. Here's the catch, though. Most people have no idea what they're sitting here to do. Most people just neander, or walk, or neander around as if they are just somehow born to mom and dad, and uh, mom and dad lived and did this, therefore I'm supposed to do this, and uh, that's it, and then we die. We have some kids, hopefully they grow up okay, and then boom, they die. We die. We all die. Oh, matter of fact, before we die, the world may come to an end. So therefore, there's no need to plan for tomorrow. There's no need to make preparations. Therefore, there's no need to prepare. There's no need to be ready. There's no need to leave anything behind. There's no need to build anything, start anything, because the world's coming to an end. I was sitting at... Uh, Starbucks Saturday me and my son my youngest went on a hike six miles he's five years old six miles and I can tell he wanted to quit you know the reason he didn't quit he didn't quit because he was with me and I wouldn't have thought less of him if he did I was very proud that he had got up at five o'clock in the morning and decided to go with me anyways I was very proud I was very hesitant the first time I took him I didn't think he could make it we did three miles Second time I took him, we did six. But we're sitting at Starbucks afterwards. And it's, a, I'm, I'm going to assume it's a family, about four or five people sitting there. They they, they seem comfortable with, enough, with one another. So I assumed it was family or very good friends. And uh, I was doing some work and Silas was playing on my tablet. And uh, we were just kind of enjoying the day. We were outside. He had some chocolate milk and a brownie. I figured I'd reward him after a great hike. And I was drinking my coffee. And, um, you know, we were just having a little intermittent conversations here and there about what he was drawing, what we're doing, how his day's going, how he feels. And I couldn't help but listen to these people's conversation. And that's not typically the thing I do because I'm not really concerned with anybody else. But they were, they were very demonstrative in their in their in their in their hand gestures, very demonstrative in their in their facial features. And and I, and I was very interested to see what it is that they were so demonstrative about. And 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 the more I started listening to it, they were sitting in a circle and they were passing around the negative things that they felt about the day, that they felt about the weather, that they felt about some they had seen that they had felt about somebody else's vehicle somebody else's car they were passing this stuff around in a circle see what I noticed is my son didn't quit because I showed him that I wasn't willing to quit so he wanted to do whatever dad did whatever daddy did I'm gonna do See, that, now that same purpose would have been the same thing if I sat in a circle full of other relatives or sat there with him and sat there and just talked negative about what we could not do versus getting out there and get it done. Too many times we act like we have no real purpose on the face of this earth. And we're so scared to reach inside and touch that part of us that we feel might fail, that we feel might quit, that we feel might be able to give up, that we feel might not be able to accomplish it and finish it out. And oh my God, what people might think if we don't finish it. You got to get to a point where you don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. 
you got to get to a point that the only thing that matters is the purpose that God placed in your heart to do what you're supposed to do while you're here. If you keep looking around and you can't find nobody to help you, there is a huge possibility that you are the person who was sent here to be the help and it's inside of you. But rather dig inside and find out what it is to pull it out and make it happen. You live your life in quiet desperation. Questioning every single thing you do and dissecting it as if it's the most important thing in the world versus just going into it. The more you want out of life, the more life will beat your ass. The more you want out of life, the more life will expect out of you. Every time you keep asking God to open up his hand and give you what's in it, God is asking you to open up your heart, your mind, and let go of your fear and give him what's in your hand first. purpose on the face of this earth I would always hear that it's the small deposits every day you know the compound effect a penny a day you'll be a millionaire before you're 65 the small deposits every day they'll allow you to build the confidence, the strength, the ability, the know-how within yourself that you can do anything. I could tell my son wanted to quit. I can tell he wanted to quit. And I had to make a decision at that time when I, me being my age and knowing what that looks like, I gave him some options. I could not find the answer to your question. <laughs> no watch is talking to me. I said, Silas, let me ask you something. I said, we can quit and we can leave right now and that's okay. He said, no. I said, well, why? He said, because we don't quit. It's a five-year-old. I didn't give him another option after that. You give somebody too many options and they'll take one give somebody two options, they'll take one. He took one. Not to quit. I know my purpose. I know my purpose. And I will fucking die before I give up on it. <laughs> I will die before I give up on it. When you bury me, you will bury me knowing that I was still in route to my mission. I was still in the midst of my process. I'm a firm believer that whatever needs to go will go. Whatever is meant to help you along your way on your journey will be there. Whatever's temporary, like manna from the sky, will produce itself. And whatever's everlasting, you don't have to worry about. God said, if the birds of the air don't worry about what they eat, why shall I? That may not be exactly what he said, but you get the gist of it. Everything is created by God. And if everything else has the ability to not worry about eating 
or provisions, why would I? And I was created in the likeness of God. Why would I spend one second worrying about my provision? When there's been a plan planted in my heart that I need to tend to. A seed that I need to sow. Water. And then harvest. Hmm. We got two things we can do. We can sit in a circle and we can pass around all the negativity. Or we can sit around the circle and pass around all the things we're going to do great. But either way, at the end of the day, it's going to be a very lonely ride, a very lonely trip. Because not everybody can stand the pain. And I think that's what kind of got me watching the Conor McGregor video. Because he's endured a lot of pain. And he never once said enough he just kept saying I'm the greatest Ali I'm the greatest Mayweather hard work no days off what are you telling yourself Conor McGregor got up at one fight interview and he said it so emphatically that I couldn't help but believe it and I was in another room listening to it. I heard it way and I was like, whoa, what is that? He says, I am 100% sure. He says, I am, I am so sure of who I am and what I am here to do that I will win. He ended up getting the fastest knockout in UFC history after he made that comment. 30 seconds first round for a championship stay blessed take care you have greatness in you